You know, being controlled by an addictive substance is like being in the grips of a demon. Now, I've been cursed at, screamed at, and even flipped off by past guests while they were high on drugs. Take a look at some of my most memorable guests who were on the verge of losing everything because of their addiction. JL was one of the contestants on America's Next Top Model. JL is using Vicodin, Oxycontin, cocaine. Now she's a full-blown meth addict. Get the f out of here. Oh my God. Oh my. JL, come on out. The last time JL was on this show, she was high and scared. I don't want to go in there with other people looking at me. This is your chance. Have you had a better offer lately? No. Now let's go get you better. After convincing her to save herself from what I believed was imminent death, she agreed to go to rehab. JL, come on out. Mm -hmm. Wow. It is very ironic that Todd won the show Survivor. I wish that he knew how to survive in life. I'm not scared. Todd, uh, Dr. Phil. Hi, I'm Todd. What's going to happen to you if you keep drinking like you're drinking? I'm going to die. I want to take you to that treatment center. We get you right, and then you come back out here and tell us how you're doing. Todd, come on out. Say, man. How are you? I'm great. How are Good you? Good to see you. Todd is back to drinking approximately two liters of vodka a day. Man, I've got a major drinking problem. We're going to go to the airport and we're going to hit the reset button and start this over because I am not giving up on you, kid. I'm not going to let you die, Todd. He was a great kid, and then the drug use started. You admitted to me that you've tried almost every drug except for LSD and heroin. Did you lie to me to get me here? Answer my question. You are the biggest liar in the group. He has agreed to head directly from here to the treatment facility. Tell us how you're doing. That's over 50 days now. It is a fatal disease. It is a progressive disease. It is resistant to treatment. Get off of me! Mike will be okay. If you choose to be okay, you will be. My attitude when you're dealing with addiction is you never surrender to the disease. You never give up. I invited Dr. Frida Lewis Hall, Chief Medical Officer of Pfizer, to join us today to help shed some light on addiction. So, Doc, welcome. This Thank is you. tough. Thank you. It is. We have done countless interventions on the show, and each time you never know if an addicted person is going to accept help. And so we need to discuss addiction in our country because, I, you know, I am so concerned about this, and I know you've studied it. How serious is it? This is a serious and growing problem. Almost 22 million people in this country are addicted to alcohol or other drugs. If you add smoking cigarettes in there, it pushes the number up to 60 million people. 60, 60 million. million. That's like saying everybody in California and Texas is addicted. Wow. 60 million 60 people. 60 million. And that's just the individuals. If you stop and think that it's not just a profound effect on the individual, but it affects families and the workplace and the community and society overall, this is really a serious issue. Yeah. People who are addicted to drugs and alcohol have a chronic relapsing brain disease. Now, addiction is a brain disease because alcohol and other drugs hijack the brain's reward system. And this can lead to intense cravings. And if those cravings are not met, people experience physical withdrawal symptoms. They may include a rapid heart rate, feelings of anxiety, 
Um, they can feel physically ill and nauseous, and in addition to that, may hallucinate. Yeah, and I think it's important that people understand this is a brain phenomenon. Now, what increases the risk of addiction? First of all, if you have a mental health d uh, disorder like anxiety or depression. Also, peer pressure, as well as ha experiencing traumatic life events. In addition to that, it seems the tendency for addiction can run in families. Yeah, and the genetic component can really dictate who can, not who will. Exactly. Now, let's talk about treatment. The, the first step is breaking through the denial and recognizing you have an addiction, right? Because you're not going to ever change something you don't acknowledge. So you got to get through denial and recognize you mm -hmm. have the problem. And denial is really hard to get through. Um, a lot of people think that this is just a bad habit or uh, that it's a moral flaw of some sort. So getting past the denial, both for the family and friends as well as for the person who's addicted is really a big deal. And once you make it past that denial, you have an opportunity to get to that first step, which is um, into treatment. And many people think that an intervention is an important way to start. Right. And that's when family and friends get together and help break through that denial wall and intervention shouldn't be taken lightly. They should be carefully planned um, in concert with a doctor or with a trained addiction counselor. Yeah, that's the thing. Timing and planning is really important. And I always start with the end in mind and work backwards. In other words, you, gotta, you have to have something for them to do at the end of that intervention before you ever begin. Outpatient, inpatient rehabilitation, individual group therapies, combinations of those things, you cannot give up. This is a disease that is chronic and relapsing. Well, that's just part of it. So talk about relapse. So estimates have it that 40 to 60% of people who complete treatment may experience a relapse. So acknowledge the relapse, try and figure out what it was that contributed to that so that you can avoid it next time. My family, my father was an alcoholic and Robin's father was an alcoholic, so it's genetically predisposed on both sides of our family, but yet our kids have not seen us struggle with it, so we've really had to educate them from way before they ever got to a situation where they might engage with alcohol. So that early, that, that early education was so important. Absolutely, education and early, especially if there's a family history of addiction. So we've tried to pull some of that together on gethealthystayhealthy.com, right. um, including some of the early warning signals or uh, signs that someone may be struggling with addiction. Yeah, you've got to recognize it for sure. Um, I want to thank all of my guests today, especially Dr. Frida Lewis-Hall. And again, it's gethealthystayhealthy.com.